Recently, I have had a number of people call up、um, and message me about whether or not the jewelry business is the right thing for them. And it's not even, they're not even asking about the technique and whether or not the weld、um, has been working and what is the best thing. So I figured it is perhaps worthwhile for me to share with you and talk about the business,、um, jewelry, permanent welding business,、um, and also talk about more of the aspect is. Of if where are some of the executables, if we have some time,、um, if it doesn't go on too long, some of the executables, if you are already invested in the business and you started it,、um, I hope to make it valuable for you.、Um, so, for all those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I'm Dana. I am the owner of Stones and Findings. We wholesale premium quality chains and jewelry findings.、Um, and I, for about 10 years before I started Stones and Findings, I made and wholesale jewelry to stores, boutiques, and、uh, the shopping channel. So I have a lot of experience with jewelry and various aspects of it. As well, I started Stones and Findings about 15 years ago when I was struggling to find a reliable source of really high quality components. And so I started Stones and Findings, and that's been about 15 years. As well,、um, I studied finance in university, and I have an MBA、uh, specializing in strategy. Business strategy, so I can talk about it all day long. It's my passion, and I want to share some of those ideas with you.、Um, so, I have some notes here. And first, I want to talk about some of the questions I've received. And I figured a number of you are probably are wondering the same thing, so I might as well share with you. And at the end, please.、Um, Write comments, ask any questions, and let me know what your thoughts are. And I'm willing to answer and weigh in on anything you would like. Okay. So, one of the interesting questions I received was Is permanent jewelry a fad? And whether or not I can actually get Return on my investment of the machine、um, and be profitable. So, first off, if you, for any fashion industry, clothing, any of those businesses, you should always, always think of it as a fad. Because if you do not, then you. Are not going to change with the time. You'll be disappointed. You're not going to be ready and you're not seeing what is beyond, in the horizon. And with fashion, any sort of beauty aesthetics, you will need to change with the times, be on trend, and be ahead of it、uh, and be prepared. So you should always go into this feeling that it is a fad and then also decide. What you can do thereafter.、Um, and in general, for any business, in fact, even home gardening, you should see it as a fad and see because you always want to come up with new.、Um, but the key here is business cycle.、Um, without getting too much into detail and having a、um, A lecture on business cycles, I'm going to write for you what it is. Okay, see, I'm not sure if you can see this. This is a, anything with a business cycle. This is at the beginning, and this is tailing off at the end where you're not all that interested. And I would say 
for permanent jewelry um, in the states we're about here and in canada i'd say we're here we're slightly behind here and australia is close to a little bit further behind um in in canada but very close um and i'd say europe is still here so in any sort of business you don't want to launch here or here it's okay when it's at the because there's huge amount of demand and it is being met but the question is if it was here is there something that will this is an introduction of new product um new ideas new services that will extend so that you're riding the maximum demand the crest um so going back also you want the whole idea is how much runway do you have for your business your investment so that you can recoup and simple answer it's a bit complex because you it depends on where you're located are you in a large city with a larger population and then it can sustain a number of people providing the service um, or are you in a small smaller city center and it's two hours drive from the nearest other s supplier or other source right so you need to look at um, how, ma how many providers but also just because there are one or two it doesn't mean that your competition is going to be fierce in the sense that if you see there are a number of salons um, actually right where we are if I was to walk a block and a half radius uh, there are four or five nail salons and everyone is offering something different but I'm going to talk about that a little later about competition um, so there is there is definitely a large demand and even though there are people who think and I was one of them um, it's not very practical I can go I'm gonna go on further that thing once you have one and I have a whole bunch um, and our friends have it that I've done there's a huge demand so I think that in the cycle it is going to go further um, further afield now I'm gonna look at some of my notes um, so I do think that until every convenience store is offering this and you have nothing else to offer that's different I think there is quite a bit of runway at this point still um, now as with any sort of business you have to before you you look at um, am I going to be able to recoup my cost right away etc which is really important but before you go e even consider that you have to ask yourself why do I want to go into this business why if it's just purely for money there are so many other ways of making money fast dollars and whatnot so um, there are other ways and you have to recognize that in this in permanent jewelry business in jewelry business um, and, and beauty products it is a personal a people business so unless you you enjoy that connection um, interacting with people uh, you you are interested in aesthetics don't go into it do not go into that uh, because you'll be you will not like it you it will come across you be you'll come across as being uninspired and people just like salons and uh, hair hair salons we have our favorite people that we interact with and 
it is hard pressed to go to someone else. Um, you're going there for the whole package, the, the experience. And it, this is where it's different from purchasing jewelry online or, um, and to some extent, just purchasing jewelry at a boutique. So this is a lot more personal. Um, I think, let me see. Now, with respect to recouping costs, okay, as with any business, and I get this asked a lot, uh, it's quite a bit of an investment. It's a, a few thousand dollars, depending on the model. Um, for a couple of thousand dollars for the machine as well as uh, materials. Am I going to recoup the cost? It's a very important question, but I got to say, you have to ask yourself, how risk adverse am I? It's, there's no guarantee in any sort of business. If you, this, um, it is not for the risk adverse. And there is definitely a chance, a very big chance of failure as in any business. Because going back to why are you starting it? You need to work at it. There, there, you have to have a passion for the personal interaction, um, sense of aesthetic, connecting with a person, and being able to communicate uh, the emotions, the, the personalization, the meaning behind jewelry um, for you to be successful. And there is going to be, there's no, no guarantees. So aside from the money aspect, having the right business cycle, surfing, coming up with the new ideas and whatnot, um, there's a lot of elbow grease that you're going to have to anticipate. And I'm going to in, I'm going to include some executables maybe at the end or another time if if um, time permits and if you're interested because I I love executables uh, marketing strategy and things that you can actually do uh, oh I I see hello Greg. Greg has just said, just stopping by to say hello, work with a couple of different welders for repairs and your videos offer great tips. Thank you, Gregory. Um, you've made my morning. I try my best. Um, so yeah. And by the way, if there is anything else that you guys want to see, please let me know. And next time during these sessions, I'm going to um, share as much as I can and I'll, I'll do my best. So, uh, going back to talking about um, strategy, and so aside from risk averse, if you're not risk averse, you're adventurous and you're going to go um, and slay it, and you like interacting with people, so you've got some of those ingredients already on your side. Going back, can I make money as a side business, and can I recoup my cost? The very quick answer is yes. Yes, because we know that for sure. I have, we sell to a lot, many, many um, businesses, permanent jewelry businesses in the US and Canada, throughout the US. And a number of people don't actually have um, a set majority of people do not have, as, as of now, a set location. Um, we have some that are in boutiques, jewelry boutiques, and I have so many uh, salons, tattoo, permanent makeup places, but also a, a large number of people who do not have a set location and they are doing pop-ups, events. Um, and based on their reorder rates, I know their cost. I know uh, how much they're selling it for. It is highly profitable. So, um, but again, it's a lot of work and 
and marketing involved in so um there are different ways of doing that and i'll i'll go over that in a, a little later on okay so it is really important that it not so much having a location but you have to um, be willing to do a lot of events, um, be wor working perhaps on the weekends and the evenings when people uh, and, and connecting, doing, promoting with um, boutiques, the owners, the salons and make offers. So in partnership as well as um, events at markets. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that is going into the nitty gritty and I will um, talk about that later. So I want to take a moment to go back to my thing, my initial conversation about um, is this a fad and how can we, what is in the horizon? So Jewelry has been with, it's part of human nature. You see it in every single culture, uh, from time of cavemen having bone jewelry, Cleopatra is, you know, she, there's so much of, she has so much jewelry and in every single archeological dig, you find some of the prized possessions being jewelry. So it'll always be there, um, but what makes this more lasting, especially when you know you can't remove it and it doesn't seem all that practical? What is beyond this um, permanent jewelry, and especially when not everyone's going to be wanting that? And, and because so it could be a number of reasons why people don't want it. Um, having without a clasp or people wanting a clasp instead of uh, permanent jewelry. And it is that, so there are people who are, for medical reasons, MRI, um, or a number of people in sports. So varsity sports, they, they ask you not to um, be wearing jewelry. So anyway, Clasp is important. So what is there between, what, what, what can we do once we've invested in this? And what is beyond? And there's quite a bit, actually. Um, I was thinking, what is it about some of the successful jewelry trends recently? And if you look at it, you have in maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was a launch of Pandora and that took the market by storm. It's still doing very well. Um, and then you have lots of personalized uh, initials, engraving, stamping. Um, you can order that online. So it seems like the trend is what is endured, I should say, is customization, things with meaning. And if you look at it, people, I mean, there's this been phenomenal trend of um, tattoos in North America and as well as many parts of Europe and, and uh, Australia. So the tattoos, all of those things are things with meaning, self-expression. And that is going to be enduring. And so if from a point of view of jewelry, I think there is quite a bit of runway. Uh, the next, I can see that the next uh, trend aside from just simple, simple clean chain or layering of chain, it as we see it already, birthstones, um, uh, initials, mother and daughter, uh, engagement, promise bracelet, etc., to commemorate a club. Beyond that, 
you have customization. So for instance, we have in, definitely in North America, plus size. Right now, most of what you buy in stores and boutiques is um, are say bracelets and necklaces with extension chain, which is great. I like extension chain because it's versatile. Um, but there are people who don't want that. And, and um, they make only up to a certain certain size of extension. But if you want something that looks customized, finished, um, high-end, well, you would want, especially if it's thin, you would want not with a big extension chain if it is a thin, um, thin bracelet. So you could have it done um, for anyone in plus size or customized or super, super fine, super, um, or a child jewelry that is customized in length. Same thing with necklace. Quite often we want things that are, um, there is certainly the trend now is through thin layering of jewelry, or if you happen to have a pendant and you want it to hang a certain length, it's really hard to find um, specific at boutiques ready-made. Um, traditionally, I'm in the jewelry business and, and um, we certainly, I, I carry about 40 some odd clasps. Um, so we do like our clasps, but traditionally, if you wanted something, the specific length in, in, uh, so not your, tra your traditional 20, 22, etc. If you want something specific, you would go to a goldsmith, silversmith, and something that would be at least for labor, 40 to $60 just to to reduce the size um, for any sort of alteration work. So now you're able to offer all of that um, at the convenience and they already, they already come to you for other things. That can carry you for a long while. That would be the new, and, and perhaps, in fact, that super customization would be more of, instead of business cycle like this, this could be one that is a longer tail. Or in some cases, this way. So there's a lot out there that can be done. Um, but it is a matter of and, and also, aside from necklaces, there's uh, customized chain rings. And I'm, I have a number of um, possible projects, uh, ideas on our YouTube channel. So I'm going to link some of that um, when I post. And I will be sharing more of those with you. Okay, so I have been going on for long enough. Let me know what you would like to whether or not this has been useful and um, what you would like to hear more about. And perhaps I'm going to, if you are interested, I could talk about dollars and cents of investment and some hacks. Um, I could also talk about next time some marketing ideas, executables, and some things that have worked for some of our other customers. So let me know and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to leave some information about our site as well as a link to the micro welder.